Hello, this is Clint Halstead, and this is an internet course called Introduction to Microprocessors. And we're using the following book, and we just finished a lesson on Chapter 5, Section 5.7 on the use of lookup tables, and now we're going to go over an example, MPLAB X simulation on, on how to, uh, to demonstrate the use of tables. So, if you go to the following website, and www.embeddednowhow.co.uk you can find the programming exercise we're going to work on today. It's, it's exercise 5.10 but on the website it's, it's shown as example 5.8. Uh, the book distinguishes the difference, a difference between exercises and examples. Um, so you'll need to, to download the code for example 5.8. And then you can copy and paste that. You can start a new project of course by using this button and copy and paste your code here. You need to add this section of code from your previous sections in order to get it to to download to the actual um, board. Uh, if, um, if you actually use the PitKit 3 or something to download to actual hardware. If, if you're just doing a simulator then you don't you don't really need this this code. But the, it would be best to have it. Okay so now that we have the code pasted in here um, we want to, according to the book, we want to add some watch windows. Okay, because so, we want to simulate this and we want to see how that this this t this uh, table feature works. Okay, so in the previous lesson, we learned about how to add watch variables and I had an update on some of the, the bugs and some of the tips and tricks to getting it to work. Now, one of the tricks was to click on the wrench, go to Project Properties, make sure that you have stopped everything and then make sure when you click on MPASM global options make sure you you click build in absolute mode so let's click OK and then let's build that <coughs> loading completed zero errors let's assume we have no watch window we go to window debugging watches now we can right click say new watch Let's add, what the book says is add uh, PCL. Let's see if we can find PCL. Okay, so we added that one. New watch. Now, the way I get the new watch up is I just right click, then left click on new watch, click on special function registers. Now, it also says to add port B, so let's add port B. Okay. Also, you can just, you can just type these in if you want to. So let's show another way of doing it. If you want wreg, just type wreg. So that's another way to do it. That's a faster way to do it if you already know the name of the uh, special function register. Now those are special function registers, but we also have uh, we have variables that we've uh, defined. We have pointer, delay counter one, delay counter two. We don't really care about delay counter one and two. That's just to give you a delay for the LED for for delay so that your eye can see it. But the pointer is, is really important in this part of the code. So in the textbook asks you to add pointer. So let's let's uh, double click here and type pointer. Click enter. Now we should be good to go. We have all of our watch windows set. Now let's let's click run. Click run. And so it is running. You can tell that it's running because these are lit up with colors. So you can hit pause. Now we're going to go to our watch window. You can see that there's there's values there, but let's reset that because it just stopped at some random point. We want to just reset that, start from the beginning again. Now let's step through the code and see kind of how it works. Let's move this down because we're just kind of taking up too much space here. Okay. All right, so let's let's step through the code. <clears throat> and see what happens. So first we're going to clear everything. This is just the initialized phase. So we're going to just single step through the initialization because this is the same as a lot of the other code. We're just initializing Tris A. We're, we're clearing, we're setting up the input outputs. We're, we're uh, clearing Tris B. We're setting the, the port B as outputs. And then we're just clearing the W register. Okay. We're going to move 0 to port A. 
Okay, then we're going to move zero to pointer. Let's see what happens to pointer. Pointer should go to zero. So let's click single step. Okay, pointer went to zero. Now we're going to go inside this loop. This loop goes from the go to instruction up to the loop. So from line 48 all the way to 42 and it just keeps continuously doing that. So this instruction is going to move a pointer into the W register. So let's click step and you can see that zero went into the W register so now it's going to do this command call table. So it should jump down when we click step it should it should jump down to this location. So it did, it jumped. So now it's going to take whatever's in the, it's going to add W to F in the PCL. So PCL here is, is 30. So 30 should be the value for the next instruction. Now let me just show you really quick what your program memory looks like because we talked a lot about the three different program or I'm sorry the three different memory locations in a PIC microcontroller uh, you have flash, non, you have flash, double EEPROM, and you have RAM. Let's go look at that. You can go to actually pick memory views and you can go to program mem Notice you have program memory, file registers, and EE data. Now file registers and, S and special function registers. Special function registers are just a subset of the file registers. And so you really have this. Program memory is one. File registers and special function registers, that's, that's RAM. Program memory is flash, and a double EEPROM is, is, is double EEPROM, that's the technology. Config bits is a special location that we've talked about before, and then this is other memory. Config bits is what sets, of course, your, your watchdog timer and things like that, and your oscillator. So let's go to program memory and see what does that look like. You can see that your code, you can see what your code looks like actually in program memory. Here's all of, this program up here, is, this is the way it looks in the actual program memory. The address, the opcode, you can see the line number, and you can see down here it even tells you the label. And In this case we're right here on um, we are on table. You can actually see it's pretty cool because it actually shows a little arrow shows you where you're currently single step to. So we're actually here. So table is at 31. So what's going to happen is it should add zero and so the PC should actually be saying 30 let's see the, the PC counter is 30 okay the low part of that is 30 so let's go back to the program memory now let's see what happens when we hit singles when we hit single step it should take the zero which is in the W register and it should add it to PCL let's see if that which just means it's just going to give you 31. So, it, which is the next instruction. And that's exactly what happened. And you can see if you go to your program, you can see, okay, well, that's, that's where you're at. So you're in the same location. So now you're at 32. Now, now it's going to, it should return with a value of 23 in the W register. So let's, let's see if that's what happens. So really what we're trying to get, get everyone to understand is to be able to predict what's going to happen. Notice that each time before I hit, hit the single step button I'm able to predict what's going to happen. I want everyone watching the video to be able to do the same thing because if you're able to predict what's going to happen then you have a pretty good understanding of how the code works. So the W register should go to 23 and it should return back to where it came from. So let's hit single step and see if that happens. Yes, okay so so in fact, oh, 23 is there. This is actually in decimal. So we were looking at the number in hex. So this is 23 is, is in hexadecimal. And that's because uh, up here we say that our rate x is in hex. We could change that to decimal if we wanted. But let's go down here and say, let's look at the number also in hex. I don't believe we actually have that option. Type of watch variable. That's really strange actually. I don't really understand why we can't see it in hex. Well anyway, you can do the conversion yourself. If you do a hex conversion of 23, 
then you get 35. Let's just use a calculator since I can't seem to find one there. Use the Windows 7 calculator. You can go View Programmer and you can go to, you can change your radex here. Let's type in the click hex, do 23 and you can change it to decimal. It gives you 35. So it's the same number, 35 in the W register. Okay? So everything is good so far. <clears throat> now we have the next command is move WF to port B. So we're going to move that into port B. So port B is where your LEDs are at. So that 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 value that was on the that was in your table is just going to go to your LED. So let's click that. It should go to port B. Let's click it. There we go. So now port B is 35. So it worked. Now we're going to hit single step again. We're just going to call delay. So now it's just going to delay so that you, you actually your eyeball has time to see it. Otherwise, it's going to go so fast you're never even going to see the LEDs move. Now if I keep single stepping here, we're going to have to wait a long time. Um, and you can actually see, let's go ahead and look at this counter here. Delay CNTR1. Delay, you can see 197, so if we keep single stepping, you can see that that value is going down. But let's just get out of that. How do we get out of that? Well, let's just click on return here and then click run to cursor. It'll just run to that cursor and then we can single step out of it. That's one of many ways. You can also set a breakpoint. If you wanted to set a breakpoint, you just left click there and you can set a breakpoint. And then you just hit run after you set a breakpoint. <clears throat> Lots of different ways to do it, how, however you, you prefer to do it. Now the next command, again, we're going to try to predict what's going to happen. This is an increment F command, so it should increment pointer, so it should go to 1. So let's click and see, it goes to 1. Great. Bit test F, skip of set. Now it's going to say if the third location, the third bit in pointer, if that is a 1, then it's going to it's going to skip this go to. Now what is that going to do? Well that's going to mean that it's going to only do it eight times. So because otherwise you're going to clear the W register, you're going to clear the pointer value. So what that means is it's going to do this loop eight times. It's going to do it eight times because you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you have eight uh, pieces of data in your table. So that's why it's wanting you to do it uh, eight times. <clears throat> okay, so let's let's continue to go. So now we have the pointer is a one, and it says go to loop. Now it's going to start this whole process over again, except this time it's going, the pointer value is going to be one. So it should go to the next value in the table. It moves that the the pointer value of one into the W register, and it calls the table. It adds value of 1 to the program counter low, which is 30. It's actually 30, uh, 31, but you can't actually see this 31 right now. But it, So if you click 31, you notice that it actually went to 32 because it was at 30 and then I clicked it went to 32. It's because the actual next value for PCL was going to be 31. It was going to be the next uh, line. So that, that kind of is confusing. Um, that's just something you have to know. You have to know that. Um, and so if, since you're watching the video, you can kind of rewind that and you can see what happened. The, the PCL was 30. It added 1 to it and went to 32. So you say, well, it looks like it added 2. It, it really added 1 um, because it just didn't really have the updated value. The PCL is always, we were on this add instruction. It's always looking at the, it's always got the value of the next instruction. So you're just going to have to kind of remember that. Okay, so it went to 32 which is the next line and you can go down here to your program section too and you can see it right there. This is where we're at. <clears throat> so now it should store the value of 3F into the W register. So let's click single step. So 3, did we, what do we say? 3F, let's go look at it. Oh, it's 3F. Okay, so let's, let's convert that really quick. So 3F, decimal 63. So 63, that's the right value. So then it's going to write that move WF to port B. So it's going to move that to port B. So now it's going to be on the LEDs again. Now it's going to 
it's going to uh, do the delay routine again. So <clears throat> this is going to repeat that. So we're kind of bored with that now. So let's let's see what happens. How does it get out of the loop? That's the next question. How does it, well the way it gets out of the loop is the bit set bit test f. Uh, if we single step one more time, oh, okay, let's go back. Okay, let's get out of this return. Let's run the cursor in single step. Now notice it's going to increment the pointer. Now it went to two. Now it's going to bit set and it's going to see, it's testing to see if the pointer has went to a value of eight. Now since we're kind of, we're kind of sick of this, we want to see what's going to happen so let's run it and so until we get to a value of 8 on the point. So I set a breakpoint here. I'm going to run it all the way through. So I, when I hit run, it runs all through that loop. It, it goes through the delay. You can see that the pointer is going to 4 each time. Uh, it's incrementing each time. Oh, so let's run it. 5, 6, 7, Okay, now actually I'm going to I'm going to set a breakpoint right before that, and I'm going to run it one more time until it gets to, to right there. Now I'm going to single step. Now it went to eight. Okay. Now it's going to do a bit test f, and it's going to see if location three is a one. Okay, so and it should be. So it should skip. Ah, it did. See, if, if finally it skipped that loop. So you finally got out of that loop. Because always before you're going through that loop. Now, let's just clear that breakpoint. I just want to clear that. I don't like seeing it. Okay. <clears throat> it's so simple to, to do that breakpoint. Just remember, just left click there and you can you can clear that breakpoint. Now it's going to move little to W0. So it loads the W register with 0. And moves the W register, which is 0, to the pointer. See, it cleared the pointer. And now it's going to go to loop. So that's the entire process. You've solved the whole thing. Now it's just going to keep repeating that cycle over and over again. And what that's going to do is it's going to, whatever values you put here in your table is just going to get written to your LEDs. So now let's say that we wanted to, <clears throat> to download that. Let's say we want to download, download that program to our uh, hardware, our ping pong hardware. So we just click, click the wrench. Actually, we have to click stop. Let's click stop. Click the wrench icon. Let's go to pick kit three. Click OK. Now we're going to let's just rebuild it. We probably don't really need to. <clears throat> now we connect your hard. Make sure you got your your hardware connected. And let's, uh, really quickly, I'll just show you the hardware while well, that's coming up. Okay, there it is. So just make sure you connect your hardware. And you got the Pick Kit 3 going to the Pick, Pick Dem Lab Board. I've got the Ping Pong hardware built. Now, <coughs> let's, let's see, download it. It said loading complete, so let's download it. And then just say OK. OK, it's downloaded that. Now, programming verified. Now let's just look at that and see. You can see that it appears to be working. You got your code, you got your different pattern on it. And you can put whatever values you want in the uh, in the code, and you can just get all these different types of patterns. So that's that's how it works, and I really appreciate you participating in the lessons, and I'll see you for the next lesson. Thank you very much.